This video covers causal attribution in impact evaluations. This is Carlos. He's a social policy specialist at UNICEF Nicaragua. He is planning an impact evaluation of a child rights policy to understand its effects and whether it has contributed to better child well-being in Nicaraguan communities. As part of planning the evaluation, Carlos is thinking ahead as to how it will be used. He knows it won't be enough to just measure whether there have been improvements in child well-being. He will need to know whether the policy support has contributed to these changes. That way, people will be able to learn from his experience about how to implement similar child rights policies in other settings. For example, if positive changes in child well-being occur, and it is assumed that these are because of the new policy, the policy may be continued or replicated in other places. But if the new policy was not the cause of these changes, then its implementation elsewhere is unlikely to have a positive impact on child well-being. All impact evaluations have to address the issue of cause and effect. What has produced the changes that have been observed? And how much is due to the intervention? But how can Carlos do that in this impact evaluation? There are three broad strategies that he can use to establish causal attribution in this impact evaluation. 1. Estimate the counterfactual. 2. Check the consistency of evidence with the theory of change. And 3. Rule out alternative explanations. If a counterfactual approach is suitable, Carlos could develop an estimate of what would have happened if the child rights policy did not exist and then compare this to the actual changes. Estimating the counterfactual is usually done by creating a group that is similar to the participants, but which is not involved in the intervention. For example, from a neighbouring province where the intervention is not active. In an experimental design, such group is known as the control group, and in a quasi-experimental design, it's called a comparison group. You can find out more about evaluations using counterfactuals in Brief 7, Randomised Controlled Trials, and Brief 8, Quasi-Experimental Design and Methods. Sometimes it is not possible to create a sound estimate of the counterfactual. For a whole country policy, it might not be possible to identify individuals or sites who are not affected by the policy. In this situation, Carlos will need to use the other two strategies. One strategy is to check whether the evidence is consistent with the theory of change. In other words, did Carlos see what he was expecting to see? To do this, Carlos can 1. Check situations where the final impacts were achieved to see if they also met the expected intermediate outcomes. 2. Check if the timing of the impacts supports the hypothesis of how the intervention caused the impacts. And 3. Systematically compare different case studies in order to understand whether the same factors interacted in each case to cause the impacts. The other strategy Carlos could use is to rule out alternative explanations for the impact. To do this, he will need to identify other possible causes of the changes in child well-being and then gather data to see if they can be ruled out. Carlos can get advice from experts, community members and other stakeholders to identify other possible explanations. For example, maybe it was action by grassroots organisation that led to better child well-being without the need for a national policy. Or it could have been a new national child education programme rather than a child rights policy. By weighing the evidence, Carlos can assess whether these alternatives can be ruled out or not. While some organisations require the use of a counterfactual in order to establish causal attribution, the United Nations Evaluation Group advocates choosing an appropriate mix of methods to suit the circumstances of the impact evaluation and the key evaluation questions it is trying to answer. Although it is important to address causal attribution in impact evaluation, it is also important to understand the limits of a single evaluation.
evidence-based decisions can be strengthened by combining the findings from several impact evaluations. You can find out more about impact evaluation from the other videos and briefs in this series. For more detailed information on establishing causal attribution, see Methodological Brief 6 at www.unicef-irc.org.